All right, I've brought in my different elements and the technique I am showing you is once you've brought in your different layers, now we start to do what are called rough cuts. So the first layer I bring in is that background layer. I don't need to cut that out because it's the furthest back. Other things are gonna go on top of it. The next layer is this one. And to cut it out, I use my lasso tool, which is the second tool down in the, the drawer that is three down from the top, two underneath the move tool. Lasso tool, that's what I want you to use. And I just do a rough cut, a rough selection. I'm not using a tablet, I'm just using the trackpad of my laptop. And you have to close the loop. So I've made a selection. It's like taking a magazine page and then just tearing out the thing you want. But when you tear it out, you know you're not getting a clean edge like you would with an X-Acto knife. So you tear it out, leaving lots of extra room around what you want. Overlap's important. Now, instead of deleting like we've done before, right, uh, it will tell me I can't because it's not rasterized. And instead of rasterizing, instead of rasterizing, I am going to hit Command-J. Command-J is to duplicate a layer, but when you have a selection active, it will duplicate that selection within that layer and put it onto a new layer. So when I hit Command-J, look what's happening right here. So it added what it calls layer two. Then I turn off the smart object that's underneath, and what do I have? I have a rasterized version of the thing I cut out. And if I ever need to get more from it, if I accidentally cut too much or I want another part of that reference, I still have that smart object in my library of layers. Okay, I'm going to turn on my onion skin just to see where that should go. And it should go roughly about there. And I've got some nice overlap, clouds on clouds. I'm not going to worry about matching their colors yet. I'm not going to worry about blending these edges yet. First, I just want to stack up all these rough cutouts to see if I have what I need in terms of layers to make my image. This was the other rough cutout I did at the end of the last video, so I'm just going to use that one and place it in because I like that little puffy one in the corner. Okay, next. The next element is this one. If you don't want to see transform tools automatically, click on these three dots that are in your move tool options. Not the three dots, sorry, the gear, and say uncheck show transform controls because they can get really confusing. Okay, this next one is are these misty mountains in the background. And they're wide enough, they're big enough. I'm going to put them right there. And how do I select them? Well, I don't want any of this stuff. But I want pretty much all of this. So I rough cut it out. And then I hit Command J, but I have to make sure I'm doing it from the layer. So Command J, it puts it on top. I turn off the smart object underneath, turn off my sketch, and then I can move this one underneath my other one because you want to stack them so that they go in order, right? This to this to this. Just to show you how effective this is going to be when we start doing color correcting is that Sometimes all it takes to blend background layers is playing with opacity. Like blending these clouds into that background. <clears throat> but right now I'm just going to keep everything at 100% opacity. Okay, next. In fact, I might even do this. Put these clouds in between. And I might just grab these clouds roughly. So this is no longer my furthest back layer. Duplicate that so that that sits on top and then command T free transform my clouds to stretch up and be even bigger. So you can adapt this the scope as you go. All right, next, got another peak. Gonna bring it in. 
I'm going to have five layers just in my background. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I can have that. Some options. I can transform this before I cut it out. I can flip it horizontally if I want. So that all these mountains are kind of, the wind's kind of pulling in the same direction. The lighting feels similar. And I can shrink it before I cut it out, right? I don't want it to be too symmetrical. So Command T, I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. It's going to fit in more with this peak. Or I can hold down Shift and kind of squeeze it so it looks even a little bit more surreal. Because it's organic, I can do that. Now I'm going to cut it out. How do I do that? Rough cut, like tearing a magazine page. I don't want those hard edges. But I do want all this bottom part that's going to merge into the middle ground. Then Command J. And then turn off the smart layer. And there we go. Now, what goes on top of that? I was thinking these ice cream cones. So, rough cut them out with my lasso. Later, I'll use magic wand and get, out, get rid of all that white background. But right now, just rough cut. And I can even use the blurry stuff in front. Command J, that automatically rasterizes them, turn off the smart object, place them, transform them. So Command T, maybe I want these to be flipped, rotated, flip it again, <laughs> rotate it again. because I want these to feel like landscape elements, not ice cream cones, right? So I want to kind of, I can stretch them, hold down shift, set them into the perspective, hit return. Next element, I have this big middle ground thing. So what I'm going to do is put this actually behind my ice cream cones, command T it, well, it's still a smart object, stretch it, I'm just going to use some of these lollipops as like further background. Let me move my ice cream cones down a little bit. And then how do I rough cut this out? Because I want a lot of this. I take my lasso and I just kind of tear an edge up above the things I might want to use, like all these cakes. But I know I don't need that lollipop that's cropped off at the top. Then I select all of this. And then Command J. And then this one I'm just going to go ahead and delete the smart object. So I don't need that extra memory. All right, how's this stacking up to my sketch so far? I need the foreground elements, the big lollipops. I need the barbecue leg bone. That's going to be extreme foreground. Move that to the top. Big lollipop, extreme foreground. Move it to the top. Here are some middle ground lollipops. So I'm going to throw those in. How do I select it? Magic wand. Rough cut around it for now. Command J. Place it. I'm going to put it behind the ice cream cones, just like stacks of paper. Maybe move it up a little bit. Maybe free transform it. Maybe tilt it. Maybe distort it just a little bit. So they feel like they're sticking up, kind of like trees. I'll cut them out later. Next, I've got these muffins. Oh, the muffin tower. Yes, this was something I was looking forward to. I want it around here. And I want it actually a little bit bigger. Boom. And that's going to go in front of the ice cream cones. But I need to rough cut it out. So I use my lasso. 
and I just want this tower, then maybe some of the crumbs in the ground underneath. These are like boulders. But rough cut, lots of overlap. Command J. Now I have way more than five. And it would make sense for me to only have five to keep my demo simple. But we get ambitious, right? We can't help ourselves. So I'm going to do the best I can. And it's OK if you don't meet up to your expectations. You learn by trying. So this cupcake is very horizontal and vertical, right? I'm going to actually play with it with transform. Instead of warping it, I'm going to play with a tool called perspective. And I'm going to just shift the angle of it. So it looks like we're looking over the top of it a little bit. And I'm going to shift it a little bit on the bottom. And then I'm going to use distort just to tilt its axis a little, axis a little bit because it's more in the corner of the frame. And this will be the first of my foreground elements. Put it right there. How do I cut it out? I'm just going to roughly cut around it. But I'm going to leave the bottom. I'm leaving up the bottom on a lot of these so they can overlap with other things that might go on top. Command J. Then I'm just going to delete that smart object because I definitely don't need anything. And if I did, it's in my reference folder. All right, above that. Got the leg bone, got the lolly, the hero lollipop. So my hero lollipop, which I'm kind of using that cupcake for right now, I'm going to rough cut this out. We'll get very good at selections, especially rough selections. Duplicate it, Command J. Delete the smart object, and then transform, Command T, if you're in... Um, Photo P, it's, it's Option Command T. If you're on a, a PC using Photo P, it's Alt Control T, but it will always teach you those shortcuts. It's under Edit in Free Transform. So I am going to flip this horizontally. And I'm going to move it down into this corner. No, that's tough. Yeah. I'll move it into this corner and maybe shrink it a little bit for now. Okay. Now the last thing is that barbecued leg bone. So I'm going to use this as extreme foreground on the other side. Use the move tool, a lot of move tool, a lot of transforming, a lot of lasso work. Tools we've used in the first two exercises. I'm just going to grab this. This big chunk, make a duplicate of it, Command J. Delete the smart object, or you can just turn it, turn the eyeball off if you think you might be able to use it. Command T, it'll be on the right layer though, Command T, rotate it. Oh, it doesn't quite work with the lighting to rotate it. So I'm going to stretch it, hold down Shift here, but I was really hoping to use, yeah. But we'll make it work. So that's the extreme foreground right there. But I'm going to put the lollipop on top of it. OK. So now, let me turn off my sketch. Now I have what we need for the next class. I have a rough cutout. And I've got this other cupcake I can use. God, I've got a lot of layers. So that other cupcake is going to help me out right there. I transform it. I'm going to tilt it a little bit, going to distort it, Let's pull it down, change the perspective a tiny bit. Okay, rough cut that out. Lots of things to use. Because we're going to try to turn this in next class, or we are going to turn something in for it next class. So, move it behind. All right, so now I've got everything stacked. The next step. I can start showing you is to crop it down a little bit closer. You can use the crop tool. Just save some space. Oops. I don't want 
want a clipping mask. Uh, 